it's a little bit and and it's funny because like somewhat recently i started explaining to customers how needles work and kind of the 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 reason that needles are designed the way that they are and and what i've found is once people kind of have a better understanding of how needles work um they kind of understand why needles are important and why people are um we do kind of need to keep an eye on him okay so the um what Mo, like i said moma's in the shop so um with that in mind um let's just talk about basic needle theory right so you've got your needle and um this is actually a microtex needle uh for most sewing needles there is a flat to the back and what i mean by that is if you look at the back of the needle there is a flat spot We've had kind of a pandemic recently of needles put in backwards. And so every now and then when I see that, I say to somebody, your needle's in backwards. And they go, well, I thought you couldn't put the needle in backwards. You can actually put the needle in backwards. It, it, it's a little bit more difficult. You can do anything if you try but, to. Um, but people seem to be finding a way. And it's funny because normally when the needle is in backwards, it's in perfectly backwards. So I don't know if you guys are really gonna be able to see this that well, but if you look at the needle, the back of the needle that is on the flat side has a scarf. It's got a little indentation right there. Um, the front of the needle, and I don't think you guys will be able to see this, but we'll attempt. The front of the needle has a groove. Now, oftentimes, the back of the needle uh, is what people, when I, and it's funny, because this has been happening kind of a lot lately. When I go, your needle's in backwards, they go, well, I felt it, and I felt the groove, and it was in the front. And the reality is, uh, the groove that is in the front of the needle is a channel through which your thread travels. Um, it is small and it's actually very, very hard to feel. The scarf, that little indentation that sits directly above the eye of the needle, that is what people feel. So if you just kind of run your finger down a needle like that and you feel what most people are describing as a groove, what you're actually feeling is the scarf. Now, that groove in the front of the needle is there so that your thread can safely travel without significant impact from your uh, fabric. So we're gonna see if we can actually see this. I tested it earlier and it kind of worked. But basically, if you've got a piece of fabric and it doesn't have to be hooped, it's just easier for me to do this. Your thread travels a couple of millimeters down through that. And then the thread goes back up. So do you guys see the loop of thread that's created at the back of the needle there? Um, when I pull it up, it loops. That little loop of thread is what the hook in your machine catches. Um, that, did you guys see the loop of thread? For those of you who said frozen, I didn't see any problems from this side, but, um, did, were you guys able to see the little loop of thread there? Um, so essentially the, when the needle travels down through the fabric, the groove in the front of the needle is there to keep the, the front of the thread from being impacted when the needle rises. And so it catches on the back of the, the needle and it leaves a little loop. And that little loop is where your hook travels through and catches the thread to pull it around the bobbin.
And then your take-up lever, and we've talked a lot about take-up lever over the last year or so, pulls up, and that basically is like if you were hand sewing, when you would pull the thread up to tighten the thread there. So the reason that that's important and the reason that we're talking about that is a handful of things. Every now and then people will come in and they talk about shredded thread. Um, now, shred, shredded thread is, it's, I don't wanna say super common, but it's a problem that we see. Um, and it can happen because there's a burr somewhere in the upper thread path or there's thread caught in the upper thread path or something like that. But as it's related to the needles, and if you see sh thread shredding at the needle, oftentimes it's because there's not a big enough loop to be caught there. The, the thread loops, and then when the hook comes through, the, the loop's too small and the hook catches the actual thread. It actually hits the thread and it splits it in half. And then it shreds. And that's where, like you guys will see, and it's funny, I tried to shred my thread on the other side here. Like if you guys were to see, and I know it's hard to see without a white background, but if you guys saw stuff like that, I don't know if you guys can see that at the end there, but if it was happening right at the tip of the needle, there are a couple reasons for that. One is your needle is in need of replacement. So uh, if the needle is not sharp enough, when it passes down through the fabric, it pushes the fabric down. And this is the same as why you need stretch needles or ballpoint needles. But when it passes through the fabric, that fabric can rebound. It can go down a little bit. And then when it comes back up, if the, if the fabric travels back up with the, with the thread, it's the stability of that fabric that creates the loop. So A, change your needles more. That way you keep sharp needles. Um, and that keeps that from happening. If you're using something with stretch, the problem's exacerbated, and that's why you need to use a knit, a stretch, or a jersey needle. Those ballpoint needles pass through that fabric without pushing it down into the, the machine, and it keeps your loop of thread. That loop is like a millimeter and a half. It's very, very small. And if it's off just by the smallest little bit, um, you don't actually see it. I'm gonna actually pull this open a little here um, to make sure I can see comments on YouTube. So, um, so that's one of the reasons why when we were selling the needles, we talked so much about the Microtex needles. The Microtex needles are very, very sharp and they are gonna give you the best stitch because they most easily pass through the, the, the fabric. The other thing um, to remember is um, needles get hot and they bend. So I had somebody in the store on Saturday that was breaking needles. And, and listen, needles break, no reason to panic. If it's happening all the time and you can't sew without it, then you need to see us. But a lot of times it's just because you're not, uh, you're not changing your needles often enough. Needles get very, very hot. They're passing through. If you're on uh, like one of the higher end machines, a thousand stitches per minute, there's a lot of heat there. The needles will actually start to bend. And this particular woman ended up with a bunch of needle strikes on the very front of her bobbin case. And she immediately was like, oh, my bobbin case was out of place. So I'm like, no, the bobbin case doesn't move. Your needle was bent. And so by the time you broke the needle, the needle had already been bending. It was already in the process of, of, of breaking. Um, so, um, you know, sharp needles are important. Changing your needles are important. That's why we like those Microtex needles. Um, the uh, general rule of thumb with needles is you get what you pay for. So universal needles. Uh, Universal needles are fine, but for high performance sewing, use a high performance needle. Um, 
you, you get what you pay for. The, the, the higher end needles are gonna be nicer, generally made in a better factory, and they're gonna be more consistent. Um, the thread passes through that hole of the needle. Keep in mind, every time it passes down through uh, the fabric and then up through the, the fabric, the thread is wearing the eye of the needle. So that eye of the needle, as it wears down, like if you think about it like a piece of metal, if I took something and this piece of metal is flat, but if I took something and rubbed it, at some point the edge, because I've worn away that metal, is now sharp. That's how they make a knife. So that's one of the reasons why you might shred thread at the eye of the needle. Um, we've talked about non-stick needles. Like if you're using anything with adhesives, basting spray, fusible stuff, the, the, the non-stick needles are important because if there's any gum in there that interferes with that travel of the thread, you don't get the loop and it gives you that, that issue. Um, top stitch needles are, are interesting because they have a larger eye. That's what sets them apart. And that actually gives the thread a slightly greater allowance. Is, is Momo created? Yeah. Um, that gives the... the um, uh, the thread a, a slightly greater ability to travel through that eye and leave a little bit larger of a loop. So when you're doing like high thicknesses, um, when you're top stitching or something like that, you're going through several layers. It just gives that little greater allowance to allow you to get that loop. Um, and then um, there was one other thing Check I was. That surgery needles. You know, serger needles are funny because in theory, in a lot of modern sergers, like there are, for a lot of the brands, you need to use specific needles to the brand. Like uh, most of the Berninas, a lot of the Fops and Vikings have a very specific needle. And quite frankly, the performance of the machine is greatly affected by those needles. Um, uh, I've had a lot of people come in with their baby lock sergers using normal sewing needles and well, you can get well, away with that well what we were told serger needles what are special about serger needles is they're slightly ballpoint so you can go between knit fabric and woven fabric um what deb canham told us and she i would call her a serger expert she is the serger yeah expert. so if you're in the overlock position you can use other needles you can use um Schmetz needles, you could use a top stitch needle, you could use a your universal needle. But when you're in the C positions, cover stitch, cover hem positions, the front three positions, you need to be using the serger needles, the ELX 705s. So, um, we're going to be doing a special on serger needles, serger, uh, quilting, and uh, multi needles. So, so that's the ELX 705s are, are uh, only for those eight thread machines, the HA. One X, the H A X ones. SPs. SPs are for the uh, four thread. That said, you'd be amazed how many times just putting new needles in a serger and changing the thread and rethreading yeah. will fix your issues. Um, uh, oh, the other thing about mic Microtex needles. Every eight hours is, is the general rule of thumb. Surely, I think people have a tendency to underestimate the amount of time that their needles have. This is what, and, and it's always stuck with me, Nikki Brazel at one of her events. And, and listen, everybody at the event was on a machine that retailed for $17,000. And somebody commented that they wanted to use their universal needles. And Nikki's comment was, you went and bought a $17,000 sewing machine and you want to use inexpensive needles. And she goes, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But that's like going out and buying a Lamborghini and putting 85 in it. It's just not going to perform. So uh, this isn't just about getting you guys to buy expensive needles. It's trying to help you understand the performance of your needles and, and how that works. Um, the last thing I'll say about Microtex needles. So there's something called laddering of stitches. So if you've ever seen a stitch and it moves slightly left to right. So it's not like straight, it's not straight, straight. perfectly it straight. Like this. One of the ways that you fix that is putting a Microtex needle in the machine. And the reason for that is if you think about the weave of the fabric, and this is a bad demonstration, <laughs> but 
This is how fabric is weaved. You have threads that travel in one axis, you have threads that travel in another axis. A non-microtex needle is designed in such a way that it pierces, go ahead and put your finger through, through, it pierces where the hole is. Now that hole may change depending upon where the needle strikes. But a microtex needle will actually pierce and go through the, individual, the thread. individual threadlet that make up the weave of the fabric. And that is why it, with a microtex needle, you're going to get your straightest straighter. stitch. And so yeah, every now and then somebody comes in, they're just not happy with the way that their machine is threading. I walk into the back, I grab an 8012 Microtex needle that we use in our service. This is why we use it in our service. It's gonna be the truest indication of the quality of the stitch. And we throw that in the machine and everything is fine. So um, you will find there are certain machines that are more sensitive to that than others. When we were selling Janome machines for our Janome customers, Microtex needles were a lifesaver. Like they, the, for whatever reason, I think it was the nine millimeter stitch, the larger uh, hole in the needle plate, like all those things were a factor and, and we just had significantly better performance with that Microtex stitch. So um, did I miss anything? Nope. So hopefully that helps you guys understand a little bit more about your needles, the, the purpose of the individual needle types. And if you have questions about needle types, come in and ask, we will help you. And the other thing is Schmetz makes a really cool book and we have them behind the counter. And I think they're supposed to be like 495, but I don't know. I, like um, they make a very cool book um, that tells you what needle to use, how to use the needle and how to differentiate the needle. For yep. those of you that kind of go from project to project, all the Schmetz needles are designated. I can't see if I've got that on YouTube, but all the Schmetz needles are designated by two colors. One of those colors also serves as a wear mark. Um, I.e. if your lower mark is gone or starting to disappear, it is time to change the needle. It's too late. It's I always talk about this with filters and vacuums. If your vacuum's telling you to change the filter, it's too late. If you're starting to lose that color, you've waited significantly longer than, than you should have to change that needle. Um, overall, in the grand scheme of things, they're pretty inexpensive. And it, and it influences that, that performance of the machine. Um, you know, change your needles. Change your um, needles, ladies. So I'm going to get to work. Thank you for listening to me. Hopefully that was helpful. 